Call the meeting to order. Can you hear me? Yes. A little higher. Lower. A little higher. Let me do it this way. Is this any better? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Sorry. Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. And uh, my headset is in my car, so uh, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Um, so, uh, Maureen, you want me to read our typical paragraph at the beginning, too? If you could, yes, that would be great, as long as you still have it. And just this is as opposed to a... Um... Oh, it is the WebEx meeting was the last one we had, so that's fine. Great. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, hello, everybody, the meeting to order. Hello, Brett. Thanks for uh, joining us. Um, hi, Carol. Um, let's go. Um, we have our audience of citizens, and our first order of business would be to approve the minutes of the meeting for December. So, uh, let's obtain a motion or, or any um, comments if anybody has any uh, questions or changes. Excuse me, could I just have you, um, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. Are you going to read the, the that introduction about it being a WebEx meeting? Or do you want me to? Uh, I don't have it. So, uh, I'm sorry. Talking... <coughs> can I do that? Yeah, if you if you'd be kind enough to do it, that would be great. Thank you. Um, this is Maureen Giusti, the staff liaison for the Conservation Commission. Um, as indicated on the agenda for this meeting, there is no in-person public access. WebEx meeting link information and dial-in conference call number was provided and posted on the town website for the commission members, applicants, and other interested persons to participate. For those listening, I would ask you to mute your telephone or computer if you are able so that we can we do not get any background noise. Please also try to use a handset when available. Speaker phones and Bluetooth may cause interference. When it's time for individuals to speak, we ask that you unmute your phone and identify yourself. If the number, if a number of people ask to speak simultaneously, we'll ask you to be patient and wait your turn. Um, two very important reminders. First, every time you speak, please state your name and title for the record. Second, we must be careful not to speak over one another so that everyone who is listening can hear what is being said and we have a clear record. Uh, we will um, take um, roll call when appropriate for items on the agenda. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. I'm back on. Thank you. Morgan. Thanks for that. So, Back to the first order of business, which would be the approval of uh, last month's minutes. Everybody should have a copy of those. Entertain a motion, and uh, if there's any modifications, we can discuss that as well. I'm pointing at you guys. <laughs> Remember to unmute yourself if you want to make a motion. I'll make the motion to accept the um, the minutes. That was Guy Hoffman. Guy Hoffman, Vice Chair. Tom Heisler, Commissioner, I second. Thank you. If there's no changes or uh, corrections, then uh, all it's Guy again. Go ahead. Um, did we want on the uh, Commissioner comment for the Tchaikovsky? Should that should that be spelled with an O instead of a U? We can double check the spelling. Um, prior to make the question. For Chikowski. Yeah. I believe you're correct. It is an O. Yeah. And it should be spelled correctly. He's uh, he meant a lot to the town and generated a lot, uh, a lot of open space for us. Too. Thank you, guy. If that's nothing else, then all in favor of accepting the minutes as um, modified. Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Thank you. So moved. 
Um, may I? Can we just go back and take a roll call? <clears throat> okay. For for attendance <clears throat> purposes. Sure. Uh, and for the recordings, um, Chairman Michael D. Lorenzo. Present. Uh, Thomas Heisler. Present. Guy Hoffman. Present. Carl Lewis. Present. Joseph Mazza. Does not appear to be present. Um, and I don't see any other callers that we haven't identified. Um, Hi, Barry. It's Karen Pagliaro. I am on the call. Yeah, I'll just wait till uh, I'm calling the roll call right now. Thank you for letting us know. I thought you were done. Oh, sorry. No, no, that was Joseph Mazza. Caroline Goldberger. Present. Robert Ramsey. Rob Ramsey. Not present. Um, Mary Kathleen LaRose, alternate. Mary Catherine, not present. She was earlier, though, so she's probably trying to get in. She, I, I, I believe I spoke with her earlier. So. Oh, uh, okay. She's not, right, she, she's not in right now, though, but say hello to her earlier. Yeah, there is somebody that says call in user two down below. Now they just went off. Huh, I have one call in user. In the participants, I have a call in user, but only the one. Um, and then alternate Karen Pagliaro. Here. Thank you. And you got Tom Heisler, right? Tom, yes. Tom Heisler, yes. So is there somebody on our meeting that uh, can identify themselves? I, I'm not sure. This is Mary Catherine. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. You yeah. know what? I had confused mute and unmute, so sorry about that. I'm going to put myself back on mute then. Okay, bye. Thanks. Glad to have you. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're all set, Maureen? Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, Brett... And Brett, pronounce your last name so I don't mess it up, please. Simon. Oh, Simon. Okay, thank you. So Brett has uh, uh, reached out to uh, to myself um, about a week and a half ago regarding um, some ideas that we had for uh, the Hatchery Brook uh, open space area, probably more specifically towards the um, more towards the Chalkowski Orchard area. Um, so uh, we we invited him to uh, attend, and uh, we're always looking for uh, ideas and thoughts regarding volunteers and our open space use. And uh, we're glad you can join us. So please um, tell us what you're thinking, and uh, we'll just have a, a discussion here. Sure. So uh, thanks for your time and letting me join uh, your meeting here. Um, fairly recently, probably about a month ago, uh, it was the first time I discovered uh, the the preserve, the Jackowski Preserve in the Kensington Orchard. And um, immediately, I was just really impressed by the space. Um, uh, you know, it's a really beautiful space, and you can uh, just tell, uh, you know, you're protecting good farmland and, and good, uh, good heritage for the town. And um, when I was walking through and seeing the blueberry bushes and seeing the apple trees, um, I was just wondering you know, uh, what I could do or what I could coordinate to help preserve those sort of as a community agricultural space. Um, I've worked on some projects in the past. This past year, I worked with the Town Forest Association to plant um, a fairly diverse agroforestry area. There's about two acres and we introduced a lot of native trees um, with, with help from a grant. Um, I'm a volunteer at the Northwest Conservation District, and so I have some access to grant money um, or access to a grant um, uh, with a fairly uh, direct line. And so I guess uh, the thought that came to mind, uh, you know, the, the area where, where the fruit trees are, are, it's a very large area. Um, and so I was wondering if maybe I'd be able to um, see if I could coordinate, um, get a, a group of volunteers 
to manage maybe if, if I said in, in the first year to shoot for maybe like the blueberry patch and to see if I could um, try to organize a day or a couple of days um, where, you know, maybe we could draw up uh, some sort of a design and then um, and then uh, just, you know, pull out some like the, the, the thorns, um, clean up around some of the bushes and just uh, sort of create like a really nice community space where we're you know, celebrating the bushes that are there and, and, and the ones that are still living. And then also um, sort of similar to previous projects, maybe even introducing some other native species to, to try to support those um, species. So whether it's some more pollinators or some like nitrogen fixing shrubs um, in and around the existing plants uh, in a very like low maintenance organic way um, to, yeah, I guess like kind of strike that balance between you know, what is an open space, uh, sort of conservation space, and then what also like highlights the agricultural um, like story of, of that area in the past. So just, um, just have some ideas on it. And so, uh, yeah, so thanks for, for letting me join today. Yeah. No, this is Michael. Thank you, Brett. That's uh, it's a pretty interesting um, idea. Um, what so to, before we get into the, to the specifics or at least you know kind of the concepts, tell us again your your backgrounds. So how did you find how did you find us? How did you find Kensington Orchards and and your background and that sort of thing? Sure. So I, I literally just drove by it and I was like, you know, that looks like because I saw the sign for the preserve and I was like, you know, that looks like a that looks like a whole field of blueberries. I was like, that's very interesting. So I stopped. <laughs> I stopped. Actually, um, I live in, in Bethany right now. Um, currently, I'm, I'm a medical student. I go to University of Connecticut. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been interested in ecology and conservation for a long time. Um, I volunteer with the Newtown Forest Association. I'm currently involved with a project uh, up at White Memorial as well, um, where we're doing uh, like a native plant installation there. Um, and then I've also been a volunteer with the Bethel Land Trust as well um doing something similar um a couple of years back four or five years back i raised money for a grant um essentially and so there's uh basically i've been trying to connect with different land trusts um to facilitate the um kind of the use of that grant and so the way i kind of see the kensington orchards in this area is potentially another collaboration um where um where i could fund some of that grant money and then um, try to coordinate some volunteers as well and, and just put a project together. So, yeah. Uh, very interesting. It, and I, um, I'm glad that you were driving by. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty cool too, or uh, fortuitous to see that. Um, sounds like you're pretty busy. <laughs> Uh, you've done this in other towns, you said, or other uh, areas? Yeah. Yeah, so this past year, um, I worked with the Newtown Forest Association, and it was about a, a two-acre area, and we planted probably, I would say, uh, like 20 uh, trees, and those are, like, the emphasis of that space is, uh, like, a native agroforestry planting. So it's native nut trees. So we're, we planted some chestnuts there, some black walnuts, um, like certain types of hickory nuts that produce larger nuts uh, so that people can actually like, you know, potentially crack them and eat them. Um, and so right now with that project, I'm just wrapping that up. Um, we're, we're making a, a little website for that and then we're gonna put in some signage um, and, then, and then that project should be complete within the next month or two, so, yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of thoughts, but uh, Carl, our, our, we have resident, uh, our hiking expert, Carl Lewis on with us too. So, and he's grew up in that area and uh, played there too. So Carl, feel free to jump in if you have any uh, questions too as well, please. Or anybody else for that matter. So what... uh, Michael, d uh, did you wanna ask your questions first? It's Carl Lewis, Hi. regular absent well, uh, um, conservation commissioner. I actually, um, we have to ask some questions because I think it's a it's an interesting idea, Brett. Um, it 
it we do have um it's a use of town property which in, in itself is uh is is not a you know uh an insurmountable issue but it was a working orchard for many many years probably carl can probably vouch for decades if it's probably that um and part of the acquisition process we went through the we got a dep grant to uh assemble a lot of this open space uh because it was a working orchard there was some there were some restrictions on the deeds of what can be done um or there may i should say there may be some restrictions on um disturbing the soil because of past agricultural uses involving potential chemicals and, and stuff like that so and i do recall and i don't know the the answer right up right off top of my head but i remember restrictions as to we had to um I don't know if remediates the proper word, but we had to do some soil mixing and um, and make sure that uh, we stayed in certain areas in order for uh, the DEP to approve it. Um, you know the acquisition for open space use. Um, so we would have to research that as uh, that's pretty important um, to because to, I sounds like that would be have to be done. You, you know, you'd be walking up in that area and if you, you know, put a spade in the ground or, you know, wanted to plant something new, then that, that could be a potential issue. So um, that is something that we definitely would have to uh, research and check on. So, but yes, go Carl first, you first. So thank you. I just want to amplify what Michael said. And uh, first of all, I think it's a fantastic idea in terms of the, uh, your idea, Brett, is a fantastic idea in terms of the plan of conservation and development, the history of this town, the agricultural use of that particular parcel. Is, it, since uh, at least the 1880s, that parcel was used for orchards, uh, primarily apple, but also pear and peach, even, believe it or not. So I think it's a great idea. And, and when I read your email, I was very uh, attracted to the idea. Uh, the problem is that we couldn't even, and I'm just, like I said, I'm amplifying what the chairman said. We couldn't even uh, put hiking trails uh, through there without doing a tremendous amount of what I assume was pretty expensive soil mixing. And so my first thought <laughs> is, um, I, I guess my question to the town would be, how expensive was that? And uh, uh, Brett, you talked about some some grant funding. I, I mean, I assume that your grants don't contemplate um, doing soil mixing, but I don't think that the project, either with blueberries or with apple, pear, or even peach trees would be, uh, and I, again, I think it's a great idea, but I just I just see it as kind of prohibitive if if you're going to do agricultural work uh, in a place where we have to um, soil mix when when people are passively just walking on the thing. Uh, but the second thing that I thought, uh, and this is for the chairman, and, is that we did a lot of soil mixing in uh, the back and what I call Chetkowski's back orchards there, and uh, Brett had talked about. Uh, maybe doing some other planting and i was wondering if that might be for purposes of uh you know you know uh, what am i going to say uh subjects for future review if that's something that might be able to happen because we've already done the mixing in that big area back there and then i'm gonna shut up and let other people talk i know uh, the vice chairman wanted to talk as well can, can i for one second I'm going to, I think a couple minutes ago, I was sharing my screen with a map of what I thought was the property, but if one of you could explain the, the more specific location, if I share that map again, um, I couldn't unmute myself while I was sharing, I'm sorry. Um, and that way, everybody will know where we're talking about when we're talking about back and forth, um, and I'll try to point to it. By your description, and you can just tell me if I'm wrong. Um, thanks, Carl. That would probably be you. Sure, I'll I'll be happy to. Uh, uh, go ahead and uh, share, please. Doing my best. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so let me just get my. Um, 
So and here we wow. have Covington Road. Here's the little parking area on Chamberlain Highway. Um, here's the new parking area down here. And I can you, can you show me Winesap Road? If you show me one, the the cul-de-sac oh. at Winesap Road, that's the place that my chairman calls a dog park, right there. Yeah, um, up here. Let me get on the other map then. Okay. On the map, I can zoom in and out of instead. Um, are you looking at the other map now? Uh, not yet. Oh, okay. I'm probably sharing the wrong screen. Hold on. Let me. I'm gonna pull myself into the area and then. Um, yeah, we might even be there right here. I can't see exactly. Yeah, I think we're right on the edge there with that blue and red dotted line or whatever color it is. Oh, I, mean, I should know this, right? I grew up there. Let me the well, right where it says 264, the old bar, uh, houses and barns there, right? Yeah, so my, my point would be if you go far enough back, it may be that. Um, oh, Did you find it? Uh, now I've got, here's wine sap. Are you looking at a different map now? Yeah. So, see where your pointer is. Yep. Yeah. See, see that. So, so go go down with your pointer, mm -hmm. and then go right to the just to the left, right. Th that field, right. This, I believe, this field. Nah, just to the right, just to the right. Yeah, that. I believe that's almost certainly the field I'm talking about. That has, I believe, been fully mixed, right? So, my question would be, if 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 anything could happen without the mixing. Would that be the place for it to happen? Because what I think Brett was talking about was some stuff that was just either to the west of that, where those old orchards clearly exist. See those? Yeah, exactly. Or um, to the uh, directly to the south of that, Bradley Orchards. You can see it went to see a lot. Or, no, a little bit to the east of that. Right. A little bit to the right of that. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Right there, you see that that went to seed a lot earlier, so that it's it's less clearly orchards, but um, but uh, or former orchards. So I think this is the that's where Kensington Orchards is. That's the old Bradley property. So 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 I guess my point here is you can't do much with that because we couldn't even run hiking trails through there without extensive soil mixing and then putting down chips and everything. So I would be doubtful and I'm, I don't, I hate to be the hard ass on this whole thing because I think it's a great idea and I like it. Unfortunately, it might be prohibitive to do any sort of agricultural work there, Brett and everyone, because, you know, I mean, you're talking about stepping all over that area right? and clearing and, 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 and all the work that has to be done. So my only other thought was that in that field that you can see right, right, right there, that I believe that that was extensively uh, mixed. I, it was cleared mixed. I believe this is the case. And uh, um, uh, Jim Mahoney could, uh, could uh, verify this, I believe. Um, would there be an opportunity to do some of the stuff that uh, 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 Brent was talking about um, in terms of planting and, and doing some native stuff there. I've, I've talked for a long time, so I've got to beat myself. <laughs> no, thank you. And, and again, Brad, we're, we're, just, we're not trying to discourage anything because we think this is, it sounds like it's a pretty interesting idea. So got, before I let I go ahead, I, I just want to say, uh, Carl mentioned Jim Mahoney, who spearheaded a lot of these acquisitions and the grant applications and the remediation for uh, this property. And uh, he's, he works part remote now, part time. So we'll, we'll have to get in touch with him and he'll, he'll probably know the answer pretty quickly. Um, so um, we're, we're going to, we're going to look into that. So it's, you know, uh, Great. don't, don't, don't feel discouraged uh, yet. So, uh, but, Guy, you wanted to say something? I, yeah, I think both you and Carl probably covered most of it. That I was going to say that that um, Jim would be our best resource to see if there's there are you know a spot or or spots that where something like this could occur because I think it's it's a good idea. Um, but yeah, we've got throughout throughout all the connected properties, we've got a lot of areas where really the um the trail itself is the only 
the only spot that's been um, remediated and and even that with with covering you know in some locations um and and we had to let like the the uh, thorns and stuff grow up to to make sure that people would stay on the trails you know so that um so it, the the past use of the the pesticides is, is you know is an issue out there and um i don't know i think if we talk to jim and 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 we can find a potential spot or two i think it'd be great for you to then you know bring those to you and and, and assess assess those locations for um whether those would work in something that you were thinking about so well that yeah that would be great yeah if if um and i'm like not married to any one spot so basically whatever spot works um for you all then i'd, I'd love to you know go there again check it out um and, and then like uh come up with some sort of uh like design or something or um you know just continue the conversation from there that'd be that'd be wonderful that sounds perfect. That's great. Anybody else? Carl, you have a Go ahead, Carl. Yeah, I, you know, I just want to um, say that there may be other opportunities in this property or across our town for um, you to do some really creative stuff. So I don't want, I, I hated to come across as the guy that was kind of like the, the, whatever, the bad guy or something like that. I think it's a wonderful idea. I commend you on your creativity and the stuff that you're doing uh, in Newtown and White Memorial certainly is a, a property that's close to my heart. So let, let this not be closing the discussion off, please. Um, let, let, let's just just know that we have limitations that we've come up against even just trying to have people walk through the property. So there, I'm sure that there's something that we can talk about that would be fruitful in terms of uh, your energy and volunteerism on our conservation properties. We welcome it and we thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That was well said. Thank you. Paul. Um, Maureen, and, and do you have any questions from the town perspective? Or um, no, uh, the only real question I had was, um, did we, to Brett, was did we properly identify the areas he was talking about and the orchard he was, was considering? That's a good point. Um, so, so, so the areas that, that I was thinking um, are, is the area where, where the apple orchard, um, so where the pointer is a little, a little north of there. It's that whole the whole region to the left, uh, yeah, all that in there where, where there's all the apple trees covered in like bittersweet essentially, um, and then further down towards the road, I think there was like a maybe like I don't know a half an acre of uh, of blueberries it looked like right near the the parking area. I don't know. Yeah, um, to a little up. And then, yeah, right, that whole area on both sides of the trail. Well, that is town. I, I'm sorry, I thought part of that was private. I was thinking this. So I don't, I don't know if that, if that still has the same restrictions, that area there. Yeah, if that has the same restrictions in terms of the pesticides. And frankly, I don't know either if that particular parcel, which I thought was grapes, actually, but I don't know anything about this kind of thing. That's, that's true. I don't know that we've ever established, and this is another Jim Mahoney question, whether that has the same dildrin on it that that the orchards do. That's a really, really good question. Because I'm not sure that was ever in apples or pears or peaches or anything like that. Well, well, well yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, thanks for looking into that. Maybe. Yeah, this is Guy Hoffman, vice chair again. Um, yeah, and in the, in the boardwalk that's in that area, you know, it extends beyond where you you were just talking about and stuff is really primarily for um, for how wet it is, I, I believe, rather than um, avoiding the soil in that location. I, I think it's it's because because it's so wet in through there. So that may be that may be a good sign. <laughs> But I mean, it just seemed like a good, um, like a reasonable size to tackle, which wouldn't be like 
an enormous task for like, you know, a reasonable size to design and then get a group, group of volunteers, um, something like that. Well, I think I, I, you know, every, I'll just echo what everybody said. I, I think it's a great idea, good concept, and um, let's see where we can go with it. So we'll check into that. Brett, we have your contact information. Um, got your email. And, uh, you know, Maureen and uh, myself are, will check with this Jim Mahoney, and well, we'll get those answers pretty quickly. So we'll figure it out. Cool. Thank, thanks, everyone. All right. We'll be in touch. Thank you for joining. And I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the meeting. All right. Thank you again. Why would you want to miss this? <laughs> I have homework to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Karen Pagner. I have one question and one thank you, Brett. Thanks so much. And I'm amazed that you have the time to do this type of thing, knowing how much work you must have to put into your um, your schooling at UConn. And congratulations. I also know how hard it is to get into the program. So congratulations to you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thanks. So Maureen, is, are, was there any, are there any new plans that we should add to uh, by a motion? Um, I don't think so at this time. We're okay. our agenda so, is kind of scattered for Z, um, P and Z still. We were expecting some things to come in um, at the deadline last Thursday that didn't come in. So okay. we're, I think we're still in good shape. So would you be kind enough to take us through or if there's anything we need to on the first one the for G for G building and engineering for the Tom's Court? Yeah, so um again there's not really a conservation area or anything there. Let me get to that on my screen. Hold on one second. Um but you know where Tom's is on um Episcopal Road and Deming Road. They're proposing, a couple of years ago, they proposed some additions. Now they're proposing some more additions um, or another addition. And I want to, and obviously we route what we have to you. Or Thank you. Response back to the Planning and Zoning Commission. So this is their property. Here's Deming Road over here. You'd have the corner of Episcopal with the farm that's, on this corner, um, they have solar panels out in the um, in front along Deming Road that they'll be um, pulling back in order to allow for this 38,000 square foot, roughly, addition in on the southerly side, southwesterly side of the building, existing building. Is it kind of clear from the plans that you can see, or do I need to jump to a different screen? Am no. One, am I sharing the screen, the plan? Yes. Okay. I see. Yeah, I don't think there's anything there. I mean, it's an existing, it's already cleared, it's an existing uh, impervious, and that's it. By the way, oh, go ahead. Uh, hi, Rob. Um, Marlo, Rob Ramsey's joined us. Uh, be kind enough to add him. Hi, Rob. Maybe not. Does anybody have any comments on this one? Thank you. All right, thanks, Maureen. Don't forget to unmute yourselves if you have a comment. Okay. Okay. So we're back. Okay. The next one is the one that we've, uh, it's been around for a while. It's a big project on the turnpike. Hi, Rob. Hi, can you guys hear me? Okay. Now Sorry, I was late. Glad you can make it. Thank you. It's called tardy in your business. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I was tardy. It was late yesterday, so that makes me retardy today. Stay away from those detentions. 
Um, so Maureen, what, uh, if everybody uh, remembers, this is the mixed use project proposed on the Berlin Turnpike um, on the west side, uh, where they've been filling in for quite some time, a couple of years now. Um, it also happens to be a pumping station for the Water Control Commission as part of the Matt Bassett uh, line. Um, it is before the intersection of uh, the Episcopal Road, right? I mean, Deming Road. Deming Road. It's yep. just before Deming Road. Um, yep. And, and Action Auto, or, what, or Action Auto, whatever that is. Right. Um, south of the Blue Lobster. Yeah, so what's what's going on with that? That's the 200, 200 residential units, 100 room hotel and tail and um, a gas, gas station. station. And um, another commercial building. Right now we are engaging um, peer consulting review for the engineering and planning aspects of the plan um, prior to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, taking you know in order for their review for their review purposes um we're engaging third party review um and um that's being you know in the in the process now so it was postponed from the november 3rd public hearing um where it was originally scheduled they have not opened the public hearing for the planning and zoning commission yet um i don't know whether will have the um, any um, substantive information to open it on the 21st or not, but that's where the scheduling got moved to and it may be further pushed out in order to um, give the third party consultants time to do their, their thing. Um, the, it went through Inland Wetlands. Inland Wetlands did have a third party consultant um, reviewing the plans as well um, for their review now our turn to do the same. I, I, was, I was under the understanding that Wetlands approved it as uh, proposed. Yes. yes, they did. They did, but they had had a third party um, review to um, provide feedback for them as well. Oh, okay. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Well, it's still open, so it's still, uh, yeah. still, we can still talk about it, obviously. Yeah, if anyone, so I left it on the agenda in case anyone had further comments. It was, if you remember, um, Mr. Diadio joined the meeting and um, gave an overview of the project and um, their plan to um, dedicate some conservation area um, or land or area to the land trust on the westerly side of the development and um, and you guys provided um, some comments, but you might remember that it was approximately 800 pages worth of documents that we uploaded that had been submitted. So I thought the longer, I or rather, I thought the opportunity to leave it on the agenda and in case someone had uh, reviewed further would be appropriate. Well, if anybody has any comments, uh, that was a good time. Yeah, it's it's Guy, Vice Chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think in the end, I asked some questions last time. Um, but in the end, I think most of the issues that we would be looking at are, are likely to be inland wetland related. And unless they change some component of this and it has to go back to inland wetlands, you know, then that's already, that ship's already sailed, you know, for us. Because from what I can tell, um, the experts said that the, the mitigation for, for them taking wetlands and going into the flood zone and stuff was not, would cause more damage and stuff. But I don't, I don't think that they have any other mitigation this i don't think that they put up money i think that they're they're kind of using or are saying that the the public space is kind of payback or whatever for this 
and they didn't draw back from where the gas station is and get that out of the what is currently the the flood zone so so you know typically inland wetlands is supposed to protect and enhance wetlands and it looks like wetlands are being taken the only mitigation they thought was going to be more negative but they but no moves were made to to stop them from taking as much a, in, and having as much of an impact on the the wetlands and flood zone so unless and i don't think you know that's not going to be something that planning and zoning is gonna, is going to deal with so unless, unless something changes on it um and it has to go back to wetlands then then i guess i don't officially have any any other comment with it because because it's it's out of out of planning and zonings purview so um so from the procedural standpoint that is um so um overall and general concerns um that the planning and zoning commission will be addressing are those which they have purview over um through the plan of conservation and development the um zoning regulations obviously as well as statutory authority to comment on and um the third party reviewers will also be assisting us in identifying any of those that um may not be um as clear to some of us as they may be to them um, because that's their um, focus of expertise we have um, the planning where we're working to engage a planning firm and an engineering firm um, both to handle the different pot aspects of the project um, because it is a complex project with a lot of considerations um, particularly the engineering and drainage and um, and elevations and fill that have all come in that are very pretty technical um, matters that we just don't have the town staff that can in uh, analyze in the same way resources. So I'm sure they'll provide any comments that we do have purview over. They will help identify those. Thank you, Maureen. Um, anybody else have any questions about this particular project? Maureen? No? Okay, thank you. Um, Maureen, uh, before we move beyond this, the one other uh, project that uh, we had talked about previously that uh, just uh, interested to know the status of that military museum on Chamberlain Highway, if that's the proper name for it. Well, well. We'll go for it. We've we've been calling it a number of different things. So um, it's the the military museum outdoor use is what I've tried to identify the um, the um, the files as generally speaking. Um, and the application that was pending for a rather long time and was being delayed has been withdrawn by the applicant. However, um, my understanding is that they have gained, um, they have engaged some professional assistance and therefore are likely to be returning with a new application, um, a little bit redefined, as well as some more um, specific data in accordance with our um, submission requirements and uh, working to align more with the regulations so they're getting some professional advice with which to come through the process um as far as i understand we have gotten nothing new and not a, we have not received a new application um and i haven't gotten an update recently thank you so um if you could just uh, refresh up, up the procedure again when, when a project like this one that we're talking about or anyone they're requesting a zone change. Is that a separate uh, procedural uh, move? Or is that a is that part of the regular, um, you know, development plan submission? So you're you're asking about the one that's for BT two thousand eight for Peter Diadio's project where he has three. No, well, I'm asking for. No, the military museum one where there was Mountain Reserve one, and they're and they're asking to. Uh, so they did not have 
a zone change or a, um, th there was no zone change, nor was there a tax change application that went along with his application. His application was purely a use um, a, um, under special permits that he was proposing he, he fit within. Um, they may be coming in with some change, some proposals to the regulations or, or but we, I just don't know at this point. Okay. Um, I think we had a question in case you didn't see that. I think it was, yeah. <laughs> Carl, go ahead. Carl had raised his hand. Um, so, so this might be a stupid question, and Never, this commission no is used. To, no, this commission is used to them from me. But um, there is something on uh, in the Connecticut General Statutes that discusses preservation of um, the trap rock ridges, and I'm not sure if that um, applies. And I'm sorry that I haven't been at meetings lately, but a part of the part of the uh, the, the portion of land that this guy's talking about or the applicants talking about is a trap rock ridge. And I was wondering if there's anything impl implied in uh, that general statute or any regulation that uh, has been promulgated uh, subsequent to it uh, that um, supersedes our zone or would inform this discussion at all. Uh, I think um, in the writing of that zone, and and it's any amendments that have happened to it that statute was part of the consideration that allowed for the regulation or they they seem to to work somewhat together um oh, when we, so. we get an application we do know about that regulation you know i know about that statute we've looked at it for a couple of other things that have come along since i started working for the town so um i imagine you know, when we get something, you may recall his plans were pretty undefined. They really didn't tell us much about disturbances or anything that was going uh, was going to be um, be affecting the site itself as far as um, structures and improvements to the site, other than activity and people. Um, which yeah. didn't have much of a handle on it. So there, okay. we didn't get very far in the review process because we didn't have anything to review, enough to review. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. I don't know what's contained or implied by the, the uh, statute or the, uh, the regulation. Um, I'm just asking out of sort of ignorance. Uh, but the, the other question I would have is, does that statute somehow trump or... Um, I'm not trying to be a blowhard here. I'm just wondering if that... Uh, Trump's local zoning or if there's like we can't change the zone or this guy can't or the applicant can't do what he wants to do uh, solely based on that statute, which clearly the intent of the statute, as I understand it, is to um, seek to preserve the, the, his, the, the trap rock bridges in, in Connecticut. I'm out. Yeah, yeah so that is the intent of the, I'm, well, what will we to say what the intent of the legislature at the time was, but it certainly seems to be the intent of the regulation. Um, it probably even says it in, in that statute. Um, like I said, it's been a long time since I've read that statute. Um, but generally speaking, the within a statute, we can um, follow this, the wording of the statute to determine whether that it is giving the town the minimum or the maximum of their authority and we kind of have to look at each one and and how they're written um typically our zoning regulations um in many ways can be more restrictive than the statutes when it comes to something of the nature of preservation but at the same time there are some things where we can't cross a certain line um, with regulating, over-regulating, so to speak, would be what, probably what the, the state proponent would call it, you know, where the line is. Thank, so, thank you very much for that, that answer. I appreciate that. No problem. Thanks for the update on that one, Maureen. Um, 
town lands? Anything with the garden, Maury? No, I, I've heard nothing. No, there's been no activity. It's it's winter. Okay. I guess no news is good news uh, for now, anyway. Um, but spring will be here before we know it. So I guess uh, in the next month or two, we can talk about registration again. Yeah, and um, Woody had been um, looking into the situation of the well and was getting some testing done. I don't have a, um, I, I, I haven't gotten an update with regard to that as to what uh, might be required to get the water. Electric service for yeah. the pump. Yeah. Right, but it's not just the electric service, it's whether the well is, um, and I don't want to speak out of turn because it was some time ago that he brought it to my attention and was looking further into it, but I think it's the condition of the well as to whether it's, um, whether it's in the condition that you want to pump more water out of and at what volume um, in order to, to weigh that against a, an upgrade that may have to be done if you bring electricity in, it, does it um, domino affect other improvements? So. Right. I think it's a shallow well. Yeah. He was looking into that. Um, okay. I think, I think, he, no, I, I don't want to say what I think about, so. Okay. Um, Thanks, uh, but we'll, we'll have to start uh, uh, gearing up in the next month because it'll be April, and then, you know, and if the trend continues that, uh, you know, it's getting warmer earlier, you know, it might happen, so thank you. When uh, are, um, if I may, when are um, registrations generally opened for the early, um, early registration for the garden? You know, I'd have to look in, in the in the minutes. Fran would probably know that answer, but I think he usually starts in I'm going to say March or April for the early stuff. Can uh, we just proceed from the administrative standpoint in at the staff level of just posting it at the appropriate when you know you typically do? Is that yeah with the commission in general, or do you have to steer that? Um, you know what, if it's, if, if you can find the information for next meeting and then we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. If anybody has any, you know, comments or changes, we can talk about it at that time. But, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, second week of February is still early enough to, uh, if we want to, you know, modify anything. Okay. And if, um, there's, uh, just for the record. If there's a um, issue with that meeting, snowstorm, you know, who knows what might happen with um, COVID numbers, with anything. I just, I hate to count on any specific meeting dates. I've had too many that have changed in the last year. Um, then I'll talk to the chairman, talk to Chairman DiLorenzo about moving forward with getting things posted on the website for anyone who's um, interested. If that's all right with everybody. Hey, um, everyone, this is Karen. If I remember correctly, the date that, uh, that they can start applying is typically right on the application. So if you just pull that last year's application up, you'd be able to see that. And I believe, Michael, you're right. It is in March that it starts. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks, thanks, Karen. Fran usually, is, as Michael said, Fran is usually the um, the one who orchestrates that with or administers it within our office. So I'm just not familiar with those specifics. <laughs> thank you. Yes, and thank thank Fran as always. Anybody. Uh, but, and, and we will have to, and I, you or I, obviously you see more than that, but I'll have to, I made a note to talk to Woody too, because after, uh, that was an issue, that's an issue, it has to be dealt with now. So we got to figure that one out there. Um, that's it. Anybody, uh, Commissioner comments? You know. I, it's, it's, it's Guy. I just wanted to, to say it was nice to have Carl back. We missed him. 
nice comments tonight, right in your wheelhouse. And I thought, especially to Brett, it was a, a great comment to tell him that we'd like to have it be a fruitful project in the orchard. So, <laughs> thank you, guy. That was very nice of you. I, I didn't mean to miss. I had some other stuff that I was doing, uh, but uh, uh, it's it's really great to be back here with uh, all of you guys. You know what I mean. So thanks, guy. Fruitful, very fruitful. I, I also want to say that part of the reason that uh, Carl has been missing is because he's been training and he's uh, the, probably the town of Berlin's newest official firefighter, volunteer firefighter, Carl Lewis. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, senior citizen is what Michael wanted to say. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll have at least a few good years, Carl. <laughs> oh, geez, Tom, coming from you, that means something. <laughs> oh, God. And as a firefighter, you can get your COVID vaccination, too. I've already had my first. Ooh, good uh, for you. And I'm, right. waiting, I'm waiting on my second. No, no side effects here. <laughs> Good. Congratulations, Carl. Thanks. Anybody else have any uh, comments, questions? All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, well, we have to entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. So well, moved. Thank you, Tom. All in favor of adjourning? Say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Unanimous. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you, Maureen. Thanks, Maureen. Thanks, Mary. Hey, Good night, everybody. Hey, I think you are. Karen. Bye. Bye now. Happy New Year, everyone. You too. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Bye.